It's the little bag. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just reminding you. Yeah. That's our Oh, and I found this at the Dollar General. You did? Okay, because I found some, and I really like that. I found some at Roses for like 79 cents. So I got some a little bit bigger, maybe. They might be too big, but I figured it's a little bit I like that one.
Good morning. Um, I'm, I'm Sherry Summers, and I want to welcome you uh, to Kieseltown United Methodist Church this morning, to both those of you that are here present with us in the sanctuary, as well as those that are at home viewing from home. This is the second Sunday after Pentecost, and it also is also Graduate Sunday. And we will be later uh, honoring and recognizing our graduates who will be graduating later this week. Uh, at this time, let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to gather on this your holy day, and let our hearts and minds be open to hearing and understanding your words, and let us then go forth with love and compassion and a willingness to share. Amen. If you will uh, look in your bulletin, we have a responsive reading. Uh, if you will share with me and stand if you are able. Who is my mother? Who is my brother? All those who gather around Jesus Christ, spirit-blown people born from the gospel, sit at the table around Jesus Christ. And now if you will continue standing and in the red hymnal, please turn to hymn 261, Lord of the Dance.
have our choral anthem. now have our gospel lesson. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to be reading from Mark chapter 3 verses 20 through 35. This section is titled Jesus accused by his family and by teachers of the law. Then Jesus entered a house and again a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, and for they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by the bezel bull. By the prince of demons he is driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If the kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he is an impure spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Thanks be to God.
Okay, now we will have our message from Pastor Joel. Thank you, Sherry. Sherry, when he came up here, it's like maybe Sherry's going to preach today. <laughs> that that would have been all right. That would have been all right. Let's have a prayer. Hmm. Lord, we give you thanks for your word. God, that you speak your words to us. Jesus, that you share yourself with us. Holy Spirit, that you help us to understand these words by your grace and give us your power to live them in faith. Lord, bless this time as we hear and meditate upon your holy word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, a special greeting to all of our graduates. We have, I'm looking around to make sure, I believe we have two of our graduates in person here this Sunday. Is Anna Lee here? No. No. Close. <laughs> we got Anna Lee's, some of Anna Lee's family here today. They can confirm that Anna Lee graduated. <laughs> that is fabulous. We have some confirmation today. Hallelujah. Um, graduates, I don't know about you all, but when I graduated from high school, we got a lot of high school graduates this year. Man, I didn't have like a care in the world. I was just so excited. I was positive. I was confident. I don't know if I had good reasons to be, but I was just like, I wasn't worried or concerned about anything. Um, my parents drove me to Arizona State University where I attended, and they took me into Best Hall, which was going to be the residence hall. Even though it was called Best Hall, that was not a description of the amenities. It was named after somebody. I found that out later. It didn't take too long. And I'm my roommate, and that was kind of cool. I hadn't met my roommate. And my parents took me out to dinner. This is great. We're having a meal. We unpacked and all this stuff. And they dropped me off at the sidewalk outside Best Hall. And they drove off. And I was like, well, huh. I really hadn't thought about it till now, but my parents are gone. You know, my family's gone. And I'm walking in to the dorm. I got a new roommate in there, and I'll be starting classes, and so much is up to me, right? But even though things are up to us, the choices we will make, our responsibilities, there are still those expectations and those wills we feel from others, too. Uh, when I walk back into that best hall, what will, what will make my family proud? Maybe I'm thinking about that. Um, what is it that I, I desire to do as a student? Uh, what will I do? Will I be going to church this Sunday? That, that would be my decision. Not, my mom or dad weren't going to wake me up and send me out there. What kind of student am I going to be in doing homework and those kinds of things? There were expectations. I had a scholarship. There were expectations that I had to keep a certain GPA to keep the scholarship that I had. Um, and there were all the expectations that I had, the things that I wanted to do. And in the midst of all those things, there's still God's will, God's best for us, the desires that God has that as Jesus says, that we would have life and have it to the full in the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. So one thing about this time in Lives for Graduates, just one of those natural times, we start thinking about expectations. Jesus, we're looking at the story in Mark's gospel today, when Jesus was hearing about the expectations of others. I don't know if we often think about Jesus having pressures from other people, um, but he did. Uh, Jesus, his home base was Capernaum, is in Galilee, and he didn't just stay there, but he went out. And when he went out from that place, he was doing God's will. He was doing amazing things. There'd be someone in the place of worship on the Sabbath day who was sick, paralyzed, or they were pressed by demons, and Jesus would touch them and set them free. And some people got upset about that, shouldn't do that on the Sabbath. There were tax collectors and sinners that Jesus would say, 
follow me. And they'd invite him to their house, and he would eat with them. And some people would say, Jesus, why are you eating with people like that? And Jesus would say, this is what the kingdom of God is all about. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. The healthy don't need a doctor. It's the sick who need the healing and care of God. So in this passage, Jesus comes home to his home base in Capernaum, and he's got people around him. He's just invited, chosen 12 disciples to follow him. So these things that Jesus is doing, healing the sick, sharing the good news of God, eating with sinners and all kinds of people and inviting them to the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus isn't just going to do this alone, but this will of God thing, sharing the love of God and letting it grow and spread, it's something that he was inviting other people to do, his disciples to. It's not just Jesus doing something on his own or the will of God on his own. It's something he's sharing in with others. So he's home at his home base, and his mother and his brothers have been concerned, and we hear that the pressure is coming. There are people saying, Jesus is out of his mind. Now, for some of us who've been in the church for a long time, I know sometimes we get really used to Jesus. And sometimes when we think of the things Jesus does, we don't think of anyone saying, Jesus was crazy. What was Jesus thinking? How could he do that? That's what people were saying about Jesus Christ. Jesus' family were concerned, and they went to get him. They went, it seems, to stop him, to protect him. It seemed like it was out of their fear for what other people were saying, for what might happen to Jesus, that they said, we need to help Jesus, we need to protect him. Maybe we need to go hide him away. When Jesus' parents are outside the door, those people who are with Jesus, who have been his disciples, or listen, they, they know his mother and brothers are outside, and they let him know, hey, Jesus, your mother and brothers are outside, and they're looking for you. Jesus being Jesus, he, he knows what's going on. Um, here Jesus says something. Whoever does the will of God is my mother and my brother and my sister. So there's a few things I want us to think about when we think about expectations from family. In here, when Jesus is navigating the expectations from his family, his mother and from his brothers, Jesus does not reject his mother and brothers. When we go on in the story of Jesus, one of Jesus' brothers, James, becomes the leader in the church of Jerusalem. Jesus' mother, Mary, is there with him at the cross, and Jesus is making sure that she's cared for with his beloved disciple, though he's dying there on the cross. One of the top ten commandments from God is honor your father and your mother. So Jesus here is not saying, just forget about your family and just go do what you want, or just go do the will of God. Here, we have a family who is coming out of fear. It's a good question whether it's family or others who have expectations for us or trying to direct us in certain ways. What are we hearing that is coming from people who are giving us this guidance? If people are coming from fear, it is a good time to listen to how God's will would direct us to live in faith. Uh, Diane Williams, we're having her service of death and resurrection today. Um, she is a member of our church. At the very beginning of the pandemic, she sent me a note. She said, Joel, there are so many changes, so many new rules, so many expectations, so many things to be concerned about. So many fears. She said, I'm leaning on God to take me from fear to faith. Mm. Here, Jesus doesn't reject his family, but he's calling them to do the will of God. And he's expanding what family is. 
That's what the will of God does. It expands who our brothers and sisters and family are in the love and grace of Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't only have pressure or expectations from his family, but from religious leaders, experts in the law, scribes who made a special trip from Jerusalem, kind of like the religious capital for Judaism, going down to talk to Jesus. And they try to shame him a little bit. Uh, they say it's by the power of Beelzebub that you are casting out demons. By Satan, you cast out demons. There are times that the church and other Christians can sometimes get anxious about what Jesus is doing. Again, people thought Jesus was crazy. Earlier I mentioned sometimes we get comfortable with Jesus and we stop thinking that Jesus does radical things and Jesus is the place just safe or familiar or comfortable. If we only think about Jesus that way, we are missing the Jesus of the Gospels. Jesus takes the love of God everywhere, into every corner of the world, welcoming every body, every kind of person. It's a radical love that God has. And if it doesn't make us a little uncomfortable sometimes, uh, we might not yet have gotten the full picture of who Jesus is and how to love those the way that God loves those around us. Here, I remember uh, um, Jen, when she was, went back to her home church um, one summer, and she was going to help out with Sunday school, vacation Bible school, and she had some ideas. She said, I'm going to play some of this new Christian music. Uh, it was not what their church usually sung on Sunday mornings. Um, but during Sunday school or VBS stuff, she'd have on like some DC talk or something. Just radical, just radical, you know. Um, and there are people who's like, you shouldn't play that kind, you know, of music. And, you know, what? You know, it was different than the traditions. Jesus was sometimes going against the traditions, what people were used to for some of the religious leaders. But Jesus was expecting sharing the love of God in ways that some people hadn't been used to, and with people that people weren't used to, at times that people weren't used to, in places, maybe on the Sabbath or in the synagogue, with healing and deliverance in ways that people weren't used to. That the deliverance and love of God was for every place and every time and every people. And that broke with some of the traditions or just ways to do it. There are times that we can be at risk in the church of putting pressures of traditions over that love of God and thinking how God might do things in people who are young or like different kinds of music or who have different experiences or cultures that we have, that God could move in different ways than just what's been most familiar or comfortable to us. What Jesus, Jesus does not back down, though, in the face of the concern of the religious leaders Jesus points again, this is the will and the love of God that's being shared. People are being healed. The blind are seen. Sinners are coming to repentance. And these are the things that we don't stop. We continue to share the love and grace of Jesus Christ. It takes a lot of faith and will, sometimes with pressures, um, in our marrying ourselves to tradition in the church sometimes to continue going forward in the new people and ways that God would call us to share the grace and love of Jesus Christ. Here when it comes to wills and expectations and others we have, there's also the expectations and wills that we have in ourselves. It doesn't come up as much as this passage, but I think it's an important thing to consider. I want to warn you right now, uh, if you just decide, I'm just going to do my will, just what I want for the rest of my life, there's only two ends to that. You either end up alone, because if it's just your will, eventually people are not going to do what you want to do. 
and it will be you and your will in that sin. And that's a lonely life, not what God is calling us to. God who's calling us to life with God and life with love of others. The other terrible ending for that is tyranny. If it's my will, we may end up a tyrant. You don't have to rule a country to be a tyrant and execute your will and nobody else's will. Some tyrants only control one person. It might be a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a spouse or a child or maybe even somebody in the church. The tyrant exerting their will for their own benefit or their own gratification or their own means, not caring about those below them. That is not the will and grace of God for us. The other uh, example we have in Jesus Christ is when Jesus is in the garden and he's praying, he prays, Father, not my will, but yours be done. I want you to consider this in light of the Trinity, God who's always been in relationship. God's will, it's not the Father saying, I'm going to do this. And Holy Spirit and Jesus, you just have to follow or anything like that. Or Jesus just going, I'm going to do this. But the will of God is always the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit together moving. And how do they move? In ways that share the love and salvation and build up this world. When we are in the love of God, it's bringing our wills together with the wills of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit for the love and grace of neighbor, the love and grace of ourselves and this world that's around us. Last thing I want to share on our expectations and self, I want to share something about me, where I get in trouble with this. Sometimes the biggest voice in my head is just my expectation for myself, for how much to work, or what kind of husband I should be, or father, or how I should be able to work on my truck, even though that's not my gift. <laughs> I should be able to figure this out. And after hours of breaking things and making it worse, you know, my expectations. And sometimes asking this question, whose expectation is this? Are there times I've put on myself an unrealistic expectation or desire, something that God would not put on me, and something God would free me from. The expectations and love of God are that we would have life and have it to the full in the love and grace of Jesus Christ. Last thing in thinking about Jesus here today. What if Jesus hadn't done the will of God? What if Jesus had said, parents, I'll just stay at home. <laughs> What if Jesus had said, well, religious leaders, they don't want me dealing with sinners. They don't want me healing the sick on the Sabbath. They don't want me. What if Jesus only got into those expectations of people around, of fears or traditions, but not the love of God? Can you imagine the people who have missed out on healing and the acceptance and forgiveness and becoming part of the family of God, brothers and sisters of God? What if Jesus hadn't done the will of God? What if we don't do the will of God? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. You'll join me now in our affirmation of faith. Uh, you can find this on page uh, 884 in the hymnal, or I think it probably will be on our slide presentation as well. We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, 
our teacher, example, and redeemer, the Savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in the grace equal to every need. We believe in the Word of God, contained in the Old and New Testaments, as a sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the Church, those who are united in living for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God, where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in life everlasting. Amen. Again, if you will stand, if you are able, for our hymn, uh, also in the red hymnal on page 368, My Hope is Built. seated. I'd like to invite our graduates to come up to the front near the altar or 
if you're a family member and you're planning to come up for him, I heard we might have some of those who want to come. I invite you up at this time, and Carol's going to play for us as you come up. Pomp and circumstance. <laughs>
Kendra shared a favorite verse from Psalm 23, 4. It's a great one for this year. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. 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 Jacob Hall, he is graduating from West Caldwell High School. Um, his next plans are to attend Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute to be a police officer. He's thinking maybe of one day getting into SWAT. So that's what he's thinking now. So let's be praying for Jacob. Jaden Hall, he is graduated from Waynesboro High School. And his next plans are to attend Blue Ridge Community College and James Madison University to be a civil engineer. So let's be praying for Jaden. And our last graduate for this year is Tony Underwood. Tony is graduating from Spotswood High School, and she is getting ready to start some job training in just a couple of weeks for her new job. So we can be praying for her. Many of us know what that is. Again, job training and a new job, wondering how that's going to be. Let's be praying for Tony too. Let's have a prayer. Would you just stretch out your hands to our, our graduates and their family members who are up here? Let's just pray for our, our graduates here this morning. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we give you thanks, Lord, for Anna Lee and Leah and Kendra for Jacob, for Jaden, and Tony. You've made them part of our family, and we've been so proud to see them grow in life and faith. We pray that you continue to give them faith and grace in Jesus Christ, that you guide them with your Holy Spirit in all of their life, Lord, um, in career, in, in relationships, in, in education, in faith, Lord. Keep them always, Lord, we pray, in the love and mercy of Jesus Christ. Lord, and let this be a time to celebrate all they've done, Lord, and just open their horizons for the call that you have on each one of their lives and the path you have for them, and give them faith to step out boldly, Lord, in their futures. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for coming up, grads and family members. You all can get back to your seats. We're coming to a time to gather around the table in Holy Communion in our service. If you're worshiping at home today, I'd encourage you to make your table the Lord's table. Um, if you haven't yet, grab some bread, grab some juice, and be that host and leader in your home or your family where you're worshiping. Prepare the table there. We're going to prepare, prepare the table right here as well. And I invite you to open in your hymnals to page 8 for the confession and pardon. But first hear the invitation. It's Christ our Lord who invites us to this table. It's not just a United Methodist table or just a Kieseltown table. It's the table of Jesus Christ. And Jesus invites all who put their faith in him who repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with others and God. Therefore, let us confess our sin to God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, proving God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As we come together for our time of prayer of togetherness and also our offertory prayer, uh, first I'd like to make a brief announcement. Um, I know that you have seen in the newsletters and the bulletins, uh, it probably has been shared uh, out loud as well, um, but you know that we have many mission opportunities, uh, donations to Mission Central, uh, the food pantry, which are ongoing missions all throughout the year. Uh, we also are now going to be doing health kit items, school kit items for Cub Run Elementary School, hygiene closet items for Spotswood High School. Uh, we will continue to collect items for those mission uh, opportunities uh, and we'll have a dedication later in the summer. But in conjunction with annual conference, uh, we will be dedicating the items we have been collecting for the baby kits that will go to Mission Central. Um, so uh, don't forget to, uh, you have one more week, uh, you can bring uh, donations in to help us fill our bassinet uh, in the uh, narthex uh, so that we will have uh, many items that we will be able to, to um, dedicate next Sunday for this. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the many blessings and talents that you have given each of us. Continue to touch our hearts and draw us closer to you. Help us be loving, caring, and sharing people to be compassionate. Each of us have things that uh, we are grateful for and that bring us joy. If you have things that you would like to share out loud, please present them to the Lord at this time. Lord, for Diane Williams and her life and faith. For Lynn Williams and family. Yes, Lord. For our graduates. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Many times I feel we are more often come to you for help with our own concerns, fears, anxiety, and problems. Please lift up your concerns now if you would like to share them out loud. For Mary Jane. Dear Lord, we know that you have heard all of our joys and concerns, both spoken and unspoken. We, ask, we now ask, if it be thy will, that you will answer our calls. Dear Lord, I also, want, I also know that you, you know that we are a very generous church. But continue to touch our hearts as we share our blessings, talents, but also through our tithes and offerings. Allow our gifts to help us in to continue to spread your word and to fill the needs of the world, both near and far. We ask this in thy name. Amen.
I'd like to invite you to open to page 9 in your Hymnal for the Great Thanksgiving Prayer. I was going to tell you about this earlier, but I forgot. This is a good time. I have with me Diane Williams' Bible that she had. And I was thinking about it with these kinds of things like coming to the table, coming to worship, singing. There are some of the ways that we slow down where we can hear that will of God where we can put our eyes on Jesus and the kinds of things that Jesus does in loving our neighbors that God calls us to do in the love and will of God. Diane got this study Bible from her daughter, and it's one of those with the thin pages. At the couple pages at the front of that, she wrote down scripture verses. But then she wrote what she got from these passages. And when I was talking with her kids, her daughter Jen said, she said these things. Not just, you better shape up or something like that, but this is what I need in my life. And Diane was able to take God's word and not just write it down or a note for some future time, but these are the kinds of passages she ended up writing on her heart and then guided her in how to live and do all those things that Diane did. For our graduates and all of us to find that will of God, let's continue to make time, like at the table, to be filled with God's goodness and grace so we can live in it. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who look for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. For communion, we've still been doing it in our pews for where we're here in person. But whether we're here in person or we're at home, go ahead and lift up, if you would, the bread and the cup. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you, Father. He blessed the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to you, Father, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, every one of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this, do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. 
Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his love. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. During this time, we may have some who want to wait to partake of communion after you leave the in-person time. But those who are comfortable taking in person, I would invite you to do so. And to remember that this is the body of Christ, which is broken for you. Those worshiping at home and right here, this is the blood of Christ that's poured out for you. I had wanted to wait a moment when I looked. It's interesting. Some of those things are hard to open up, aren't they? It take a little longer. Someone this morning that said, asked me, they said, Joel, can't we take it in person? He said, I took it home and I think it sat on my counter for a week and I forgot about it. And it was still good when I took it, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Always a good time take of the love of Jesus Christ. Sherry's going to come and do a closing benediction, but I do want to end with a, take a moment to, uh, to pray. We got Marie Seiler here. She's getting married this week. We got Scott Dodrell here, and he's going to lead the ceremony. I think it's first wedding you've ever done, Scott? We also have Dale Dodrell here, and he's doing the Turner Ashby commencement address. And I heard one of his family members say this was on his bucket list. And his granddaughter Kendra said, hey, how about my granddad? Yeah. Uh, so some really neat things. We all have some neat things, but could we say just a special prayer for these three? Yeah, let's have a prayer. Hmm. Lord, we give you thanks for Marie, Lord, coming up this week. Just bless her, Lord, in her wedding as she gives her vows and her love, Lord, to Steve, Lord. Just bless them, and not just on this wedding day, but in their marriage, Lord. Lift them up and bless them and let their love grow. Lord, bless Scott, Lord, as he gets ready to officiate his first wedding. Just fill him with your words of mercy and life and grace for that day, Lord. Lord, thank you for Dale as he gets to go speak at the Turner Ashby commencement. Lord, 
Give him your words of wisdom and grace and encouragement for all those seniors, Lord, and your peace in delivering them, we pray. Lord, for all of us going into new adventures or, or new things or commitments this week, bless us, Lord, to give our all fully, Lord, in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. And now let's go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.